and we are back. Power Rankings NFL Week 11 Edition. We're going to get right into it. Starting out at number 32. Staying the same, we have the Las Vegas Raiders. Now the Raiders were 2-7, and seven, and they were on a bye week. So there's legit nothing to say about them. At 31, going down three spots, is the Giants. The Giants weren't on a bye week. They ended up going to London and they, or excuse me, Germany, and they ended up playing against the Panthers, where they ended up falling in overtime, uh, twenty to seventeen. Now, this is a game where the Giants and Panthers, two of the worst teams in the league, actually looked pretty decent. However, that's a small sample size considering it's two of the worst teams in the league. So, I don't think we can really count this for anything, and I don't think I'm going to. So, yeah. At number 30, we have the Titans. They're going to be getting, staying the same. They ended up losing, however, their loss to the Chargers was only by 10 points, albeit 17 because it was a garbage time touchdown. However, I just like the Titans just a tiny bit better than the Giants right now, and that's really the only thing that comes down to. 29, we got them boys down six spots. Didn't expect to be seeing them here. They do get somewhat of a pass because they're three and six. They got blown out thirty-four to six by the Eagles. Not a great game. Dak obviously got confirmed today, out for the season. So yeah, the Cowboys are screwed. But they do, or they are on the trajectory to get a good draft pick. So that is really good for them because well, you don't need a quarterback, so you can really take, you know, any position you need. Because, you know, you don't have to commit to a quarterback. You already have one. Twenty-eight down six spots. Also the Jets. Didn't expect to see this one. Now this is a bit of a different situation because the Cowboys have an excuse, you know. They're injured. Their quarterback's injured, I mean. However, you know, the first eight weeks doesn't really matter. The Jets, on the other hand, they have a top tier roster, top tier players. And they're just not doing it right. And the big issue is Aaron Rodgers. It sucks to say that, but he is holding that team back. I don't know what the game plan is, if he's going to try and stay another year, if they're going to retire. Either way, Aaron Rodgers is locked in as a Jet, you know, if he decides to be. I don't think the Jets can afford to get rid of him because, well, they'll be taking on a decent amount of cap space. And I think, you know, they're, they'd rather have hoped that he turns into something rather than let him go for significantly less than what they gave up to get him. 27, we got the Dolphins up two spots. They pick up a nice win, 23-15 over the Rams on Monday night in a game that was really good by them. There was really no point where they were kind of fearing for, oh, we might lose this game besides when the score was like 10-6. But even then, you did well. You scored on offense. You allowed only five field goals on defense so you didn't even allow a touchdown that's really good and for the Dolphins who are three and six when the 17 the AFC is five and five they are still completely in this race because you know they're only a one loss behind so you know even with the Dolphins suffering that injury to Tua and him missing multiple games they're still right in it 26 we have the Browns going down spot they had a bye week but number 25 the Patriots up six spots that's the reason why the Browns are going down, or one of the reasons. Uh, the Patriots ended up picking up a nice win over the Bears. I don't remember the score, like 19-3. to 19-3, to wow. Uh, in a game where it's kind of the same thing, they didn't really have to worry about losing that game. They kind of took a commanding lead, only allowed three points, which, you know, going against the Bears, who are 4-5 and five now, is a pretty solid feat. Now, the big issue for the Patriots is, is it going to be too little too late, because... I mean, they're starting to pick up wins now. They're starting to look competitive against good teams. But you're free in seven, so is it too little too late is the issue. I think it will be, but I also don't think you'd make the playoffs regardless. Because I think, yeah, you could probably make it at 10-7, but I don't think you're going to win out. So that's why. 24, we have the Panthers. They're going to be going up six spots. Or excuse me, up two spots. Uh, they pick up a nice win against the Giants, 2017, overtime in Germany. Now, it's kind of the same thing. The Panthers are starting to look like one of the better teams 
uh, towards the second half, already picking up two wins. Granted, their combined win total is five, so don't really know how much that's going to move some people. But it's kind of the same thing where if you're in the AFC, the record to be is five and five. However, in the NFC, the record to be at the moment is six and three just to make it. So I don't think they're going to make it either. Granted, they uh, also have a bit of an easier path with, you know, the Falcons being 6-4, and four, only having to win their division. It's not often we have to say that the easier path to the playoffs is winning your division and just making it. But here we are with the Panthers. So, yeah. 23, we have the Saints going up four spots. They pick up a nice win uh, over the Falcons to, you know, create the scenario for teams like the Panthers. Uh, let me quickly check. I don't remember the score. 27-17. Uh, this was one of those where the Falcons and Saints looked very evenly matched. However, the Saints did just enough to win. The Falcons kept, you know, shooting themselves in the foot, which allowed the Saints to just either take the lead or to just hold on to that lead to the very end. And that's exactly what happened. So, ultimately, the Saints did their job. And it's weird that, you know, they did it without Marshawn Lattimore rather than, you know, with him. But kind of the same thing with the Saints. Really great win, but... One, is it, you know, just one game because, you know, it's the division and all of that trap game. And two, if it isn't just one game, is it going to be too little, too late? 22, we got the Jaguars up two spots. Even though they lost, they're going up. Uh, the score was like 12-9 to 9 or something like that. 12-7. Uh, to 7. You lost to the Vikings. Now, this was a very interesting game because... Right, you look at it, the winning team scored 12 points, which isn't very good. I mean, that's great defense by both sides to only allow 12 points and be enough to win. The big issue is the seven points you scored. I mean, you score a second touchdown, you win that game. You didn't. The good news is it was against the Vikings, so that's also a really great feat. You know, a team with only two losses, you held 12 points. So that's why you're going up, however... You know, your offense also let you down. And what sucks is the fact that Mac Jones was a starter, and I don't think it would have made a difference if Trevor Lawrence was a starter. I think you would have lost that game maybe 12-10 to 10 if Lawrence is a starter, but I don't think it mattered who was your starting quarterback. I think you were destined to lose that game because, well, you guys just aren't good enough. 21, we have the Bears going down four spots. Very interesting. You lose 19 to 3 to the Patriots. You allow only, or you score only a field goal. Now, for the Bears, they're currently 4 and 5, so their season is far from over. And I think that's something we're going to be talking about is the fact that the Bears went on to start 4 and 2. They're now 4 and 5. And, well, they might potentially ruin their draft pick because of that, because. They're in a weird situation where they're doing okay, but they're also not projected to make the playoffs, which if they continue to go on that pace, they're going to end up not making the playoffs and not having a good pick, which is kind of the worst spot to be for an NFL team. Because, well, you're not really interested in the playoffs because your team's not really in the conversation. And then you also don't really get a good pick, so yeah. Number 20, we have the Colts. They're going to be going up a spot. Very legit, only going up because the Bears are going down. Um, they lost. Uh, they lost kind of bad to the uh, the Bills. Uh, Colts, I don't know what to think because you guys are still in the playoff race, 4-6. and six. The only reason you're in is because, you know, the Broncos and Chiefs game, which we'll talk about when we get there. Uh, I think you guys aren't going to do a whole lot. You're kind of in the same situation as the Bears. However, you're still in the playoffs, so you still are, you know, attracting that fan base. The only difference is I feel like the Bears are committed to Caleb Williams while the Colts, well, they could be looking to replace Anthony Richardson as soon as, you know, the offseason. Number 19, we had the Seahawks. They're going to be going up a spot. They had a bye week. They're only going up because of the Bears. 18, we have the Rams staying the same. Now, they lose 23-15 to the Dolphins. However, this one wasn't very surprising. If you don't know, I did pick the, the Dolphins to win this game. Uh... And the big thing is the Dolphins are now getting healthy, which means, you know, the team they had last year that they 
in my opinion, improved upon, is starting to get back there. So, you know, it's not completely unsurprising that the, the Rams did lose that game. However, people are just going to look at the record and assume the Dolphins suck. No, the Dolphins were without Tua for a majority of those games. So now that, you know, the Dolphins are full strength, they're looking way better than what their record says. And, well, the Rams fell victim to that. So, 17, we have Buccaneers down three spots. This one sucks because they only lost by three points to the 49ers. However, the issue with the Buccaneers is they lost. That's twice now that they lost these games that they could have won, but they didn't. And what sucks is that it's against really good teams that would, you know, strengthen their resume. However, they're falling just short, which is helping them, but also hurting them because you can tell the Buccaneers are going to be competing if they are able to get back into the win column. But that's if they're able to get back in the win column. They're now 4-6. and six. They currently sit t- uh, two and a half games behind first place in their division. And they currently sit two and a half games, maybe even three games back in the playoff race. You know, for a wild card. So, they have a steep hill to climb, you know, with us, you know, starting to get into the second half of the season. I just don't know if they're going to be able to get it done, even with, you know, guys like Mike Evans returning. 16, we have the Bengals staying the same. Uh, they they lost 35-34 to the Ravens. It's very sad to say, but the Bengals, I don't think, are going to compete this year. If they do, it's going to end up with them losing in the wild card round the same way they've lost a lot of their games this season by scoring a lot of points and it not being enough to win you the game. The big issue for the Bengals is their defense, right? There should never be a situation where you score 30 points and lose. And the Bengals have done it three times this season. Twice to the Ravens. So, in a situation where the Bengals could easily be, you know, we swap three losses for three wins, that's seven. That's seven and three. They could be seven and three, but here they are, four and six. Fifteen, we have the 49ers down, or excuse me, up three spots. Thirteen, or 23 to 20 win over the Buccaneers. Very nice, solid win. However... I don't know how you know much weight it'll hold because yes, it was a great win. However, it was against the Buccaneers who are very injured. Now I do believe the 49ers are getting hot at the right time. CMC coming back looked like an absolute game changer for them. And I do believe as long as he stays healthy, they will be, you know, back to, you know, the team they were last year where they are competing for the number one seed. Now the issue is I don't know if they're gonna get the one seed because, you know, they already have a lot of ground to make up because of you know, the injuries they face, but they should definitely make the playoffs, playoffs, and what's surprising is they aren't currently in the playoffs, they are a game back in both the wild card and the division, so they're looking in a great spot for both, so I think they'll be fine. 14, we have the Texans down three spots, uh, we have a lot to talk about, uh, the first thing being, you played really well in the first half against the Lions, having a 16 point lead, the score being 23 to 7. Forcing five interceptions as well. Now, the second half is kind of different because you're up 16, you've scored 23 points, you've only allowed seven, and you've forced five interceptions. That's pretty good. I don't know if it was on the first half, those interceptions, by the way, but the point is they got five interceptions. Now, how did you end up to lose that game 26 23? You didn't score a single point in the second half, You, you let them come back from down 16. You still had the five interceptions I'm talking about, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense. The last time that happened, if I'm correct, was 1970, so it was 54 years ago. You broke a 54-year-old record. You weren't even around 54 years ago, Texans, and somehow you managed to do it. So, I don't know what's going on with you guys. You guys look like you have a lot of talent, but you're just not using it. 13, we have the Broncos up two spots. This is a weird one. Because the Broncos ended up losing 16 to 14. However, they were a blocked chip shot field goal away. The Chiefs blocked their kick. The Chiefs were about to lose their first game of the season, and the Broncos had their kick blocked. Now, granted, with this being said, the Broncos did absolutely amazing to you know only lose by two to the Chiefs. And I think they are a dangerous team to you know go against, especially now that they have that high momentum in. We almost beat the Chiefs. We were a kick away from beating the Chiefs. And I do believe they 
will be fighting for a playoff spot in the very last game of the season. I don't know if it will be, you know, for them to, you know, just hold off the other team or if it's going to be just, you know, them trying to win and someone else lose. But either way, I think the Broncos are in a very good spot. Maybe not this year, but next year, most definitely. They should be, you know, one of the top teams in the league. 12, we have the Falcons down three spots. You lose 2017 to the Saints. However, the bright side is the amount of mistakes you made, only losing by a field goal and it being a division game as well. Pretty good. Because those are the teams who know you the best. It's the ones you play twice a year. I do believe the Falcons will still be good. They have a two and a half game lead in the division, even with that loss. So they are in a very good spot, even if they don't end up, you know, finishing with the best record. It doesn't look like the NFC South is going to do all that hot anyway. And, well, yeah. Number 11, we got the Chargers up a spot. They pick up a nice win over the Titans. Uh, and, yeah, I think the Chargers are one of the better teams in the league now. John Harbaugh has really turned that team around from, you know, the record they had last year, granted Herbert being injured and all that, to this year, they look like a whole new team. And arguably got worse, if you know, losing their top two receivers who, well, I wouldn't say are struggling, but Keenan Allen's not having the type of year he has. And Mike Williams on his second team this season. So, I don't know what's going on. Now, I do believe the Chargers won't win the division. However, I do believe they will be, you know, one of the best wildcard teams we see. Coming, uh, you know, yeah. Number 10, we have the Cardinals up three spots. They get a nice win over the Jets, 31-6. to And the Cardinals are looking like one of the best teams in the league. Jonathan Gannon, same thing with John Harbaugh, has really, or Jim Harbaugh, excuse me. I just realized I've been saying the wrong one. Really turned this season around, or these teams around. And I think we need to give Jonathan Gannon a bit more credit than he's getting. Because he's doing this, you know... With, I would say, the worst team. Uh, I like the Cardinals a lot, but I there's no denying they have their issues. And I think those issues will become apparent when, you know, January rolls around. And I do believe the Cardinals will still be a, a good team come then. But I just don't know if it's going to be enough for them to, you know, win their division with going against the 49ers. Or make the playoffs with, you know, a very tight race between, you know, the top Eight teams, they might be the first team out. Number nine, Packers down a spot. They had a bye. Uh, they're only going down because center team's going up. Number eight, Vikings down a spot. Uh, an embarrassing win. It's not often you say embarrassing win, but they beat the Jaguars 12-7, scoring four field goals. Now, the bright side is you only had to score 12 points to win, so kudos to your defense. The bad thing is you only scored 12 points. And all four of them being field goals. So you didn't score a single touchdown. And you had to rely on your kicker to really win you that. And defense to win you that game. When your offense has guys like Aaron Jones. Who did get injured during the game. So we can give him somewhat of a pass. And then guys like Jordan Addison and Justin Jefferson. You should not be winning with 12 points. You should be scoring more multiple touchdowns. Not even just one. Multiple. And you failed to do even the one touchdown part. So, Vikings, I don't know what's going on, but this, you know, collapse you've had ever since, you know, after that loss to the Lions is not the greatest, even if you still are winning those football games. It is it's it is not, you know, a good track record, which, in your, in your defense, as long as you win, you should be fine, but I don't know if you're going to be winning, you know, come postseason. Seven, we have the Commanders down four spots. Six, we have the Steelers up four spots. Now, the Steelers, uh, they handled the Commanders 28-27. I say handled. It was one of the better games we'll see probably this season. You can see two of the top teams in the league going against each other, and the Steelers prevail by one point. And I do believe both these teams will be very dangerous, you know, for a minute or the regular season. However, both these teams are very different than, you know, years past, so I don't know how they'll do in the playoffs. But this is the regular season power rankings. And as it stands, both these teams are easily top 10. Number 5, we have the Ravens up a spot. They pick up a nice win um, over the Bengals, 35-34. And the good thing is they swept the Bengals. So now they have, you know, a really big lead between 
then the Steelers, and then the Browns and Bengals. It's kind of a two-man race for that division now. And they haven't even played each other yet, the Ravens and Steelers, so that should be fun. They still have two of them to go. And, you know, Lamar's looking like an MVP candidate again, and it's looking like, you know, you guys are just might actually have some playoff success this time because, you know, Derrick Henry's giving you guys a whole new look. And then you also have some receivers you know, who are starting to do some. Zay Flowers in the second year, Sean Bateman's having a better season than he had past. And that's kind of it. No. Number four, we have the Bills up a spot. They get a nice win over the Colts. Nothing too impressive, however, nothing to write home about. Very can easily one of the best teams. And they do have a big matchup coming up against the Chiefs, which I will be watching and I will be super excited to see. Number three, we have the Eagles up a spot. Same exact thing. Picking up a very nice win. Uh, nothing that was really surprising considering, you know, the Cowboys situation. But the Eagles are keeping up with the, the Lions. And that's something that is really, you know, saying a lot. Because it's kind of a two-man race for those two right now between in the NFC with the Vikings kind of, you know, depending on what happens between those two when they play again, making it a free team race, you know, yada, yada, yada. And I do believe the Eagles will, you know, have a similar season to, you know, years past where they will make the playoffs and they will do relatively well. But I just don't know. Like, if I feel like the Lions would beat them if they played. Speaking of number two Lions, number one Chiefs, both staying the same. They both pick up ugly wins. Right, the Chiefs winning because they bought the game winner, and the Lions winning because the the Texans sold the second half. So, both these teams looked very, you know, beatable. You know, the armor was cracked, but that's the issue, is their armor was cracked, and you still weren't able to beat them. So, they are, you know, still mortal, but... Even when they're at their weakest, it looks like it's going to be very tough to beat them, which is not a good thing for other teams. That will do it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I did. I will see you guys, guys. I will see you guys next time with predictions. Goodbye. Hope you enjoyed.